harm reduction programs such as opiate substitution and needle exchange are essential to fight HIV among injecting drug users. Most of these programs are funded by international donors such as the Global Fund in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. The Global Fund will no longer support harm reduction programs in higher income countries. Representatives of the communities of drug users, together with service providers, researchers and high level decision makers gathered in Tbilisi, Georgia at a meeting organized by the Eurasian Harm Reduction Network to discuss the best ways of transition from international to domestic funding. This meeting was to bring together perspectives of the international donor community, of the state sector, including health and finance ministries, and the harm reduction community and people who use drugs to really say, to really commit, you know, and openly declare what plans they are having for the next three years. Снижение вреда лично для меня значит вообще жизнь. Она спасла мою жизнь. Она дала мне возможность жить. Она дала мне возможность работать. У меня большой опыт употребления инъекционных наркотиков. До этого я проходила лечение, но ничего не помогало. И тут появилось снижение вреда, появилась такая услуга, как заместительная терапия. И с того дня моя жизнь как бы изменилась. Она стала приобретать более светлые тона. Я восстановила отношения с семьей, устроилась на работу, вышла замуж. Нету проблем с правоохранительными органами. Встреча со, со, со снижением вреда стала первой, ну, первым шагом а, к тому, что вот я стою здесь перед вами а, и как-то пытаюсь доносить мысли сообщества, бороться за их интересы, бороться за, за свои интересы как, как представители сообщества. Поэтому э, мы всеми силами стараемся сейчас активизироваться и показать, Насколько же важно, чтобы программы снижения вреда работали. Мобилизация – это вот как краеугольный камень того, чтобы именно действительно сообщество добивалось поставленных целей и задач и успешно адвокатировало защиту своих законных прав и интересов. Because it works, so harm reduction is proven as the effective tool in people who inject drugs. A lot of uh, middle-income countries' uh, global fund projects ended, or being ending now. Uh, why did the global fund decide to end projects in these countries? Well, we actually have a transition, and it's not middle-income countries. We don't actually end projects until you get to upper income, or your disease burden is very low. As countries have more money, themselves, as their economies grow, the external financing does go down, as it should, because countries have to take on more responsibility. We were filming in some countries, for example, Serbia and Bulgaria, where uh, global fund projects ended, and that uh, endangers uh, the existence of harm reduction programs, which were dependent on international donors. Mm -hmm. So how can you make sure that uh, you can avoid the same uh, uh, bad examples in the future? How can you work with, with governments to ensure the, that this transition will be smoother in the future? Bulgaria is a somewhat unique circumstance. It's in the European Union. So countries that are in the European Union have mechanisms through the European Union and European Commission. And the European Commission and the Europe actually is our one of our largest donors. So it makes no sense to them to give money to us, to give money to me their member states. What about countries which are outside of the EU? For example, uh, Serbia, Montenegro, which are facing the same future in terms of harm reduction programs? Montenegro and, and uh, Serbia have relatively low levels of infection and high incomes and that, you know, we also have to fund other countries. So there are countries in Africa that are hundreds of millions of dollars a year underfunded to provide services to their people. And so um, we, our total budget for the world is for less than $4 billion a year. The total need for these three diseases in low and middle income countries is in the neighborhood of $50 billion a year. So does it mean that in those countries like Russia, Ukraine, where there is a high disease burden, because there is a very rapid uh, HIV epidemic among the, one of the most vulnerable population, you are committed to continue funding these programs? Well, Ukraine were as very heavily funded by the Global Fund, by far the highest amount of any country in this region. Um, they also have higher income. Uh, Russia is a high income country and we don't fund high income countries. But even if Russia is a high income country, but there is lack of political will to support some very important programs, for example, substitution program is banned and there is no funding for needle exchange programs. So how flexible are your criteria? Like, are you considering also like uh, political, uh, the, the lack of political will in some countries? 
No, because our financing comes from a development agency, and once a country is high income, they're responsible for their people. Сеньорини вреда. Это утечка работа, это раздача чистых шприцев, это консультация, это заместительная терапия. В России ничего этого практически нету, и мы наблюдаем то, что потребители наркотиков предоставлены самому себе. Ну, я бы назвал это даже геноцидом, вот, потому что вот у меня очень много от друзей, вот, и, ну, очень много смертей, очень много каких-то болезней, сломанных жизней, непоправимого ущерба здоровью. Вот, вот, что, 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 что мы видим, когда снижение вреда не, не финансируется в должном объеме. В Украине на сегодняшний день у нас работают программы, но, конечно, мы все очень сильно обеспокоены тем, что есть такая вероятность, что глобальный фонд закончит это все. The big question at this meeting is how to ensure a good transition from international donors, global fund to domestic funds. Does your government have any plan to how to do that in the best way? Of course. First of all, we um, nominate uh, under the uh, Ministry of Health leadership a uh, uh, working group for preparing transition period strategy. And of course, uh, harm reduction program is one of the key elements for discussion. The representatives of the drug user community here uh, say that dr because drug use is still criminalized in uh, Ukraine, it's very hard to access uh, harm, harm reduction programs, substitution programs. Uh, what is the thinking of your government about this issue? It's, uh, uh, very uh, important issue for our not only discussion but practical work for uh, renovation, um, revised policy in this situation. Rumors are civil. This is program maybe Zalen Kartul de Buda, Sit Quachene, Old Guri Hopa, Asylum, Tunda Sayeti Damoki de Bulebis Piro, Shiro, the Sadami and Ebekem de Barabi and Taj, just Isolat Sia Same Basta, Sashemdek, Milheda or Tampiro Visa. This program is a social program that is realizable, that is possible, that is possible, that is Georgia has a policy that uh, it is stopping people on the street and uh, taking them for uh, mandatory drug tests. How do, does your government evaluate this policy and what are the plans for changing this policy? We are now in the process to revise and to make more rational approach. Last year, we changed and abolished the uh, obligation existed in the legislation when doctors were obliged to notify police about the cases of overdose. This year we elaborated and um, ad we are adopting a new very clear criteria in what cases police officers can stop uh, citizens and ask for the alcohol and drug test. When cl criteria are clear, citizens can uh, always uh, submit complaint and uh, uh, ask for additional arguments from the police. Law enforcement agencies now are concentrated on uh, drug supply reduction more rather than drug demand uh, management. We are now in a country, Georgia, that spends huge amounts of money on incarcerating drug users, but it does not allocate funding for needle exchange programs. So what would be your message to the policymakers in Georgia? I think that our recommendation would be for Georgia to increase its harm reduction investments as it has committed itself to doing and focusing more on community-based needle syringe programs and on medically assisted therapy wherever possible. And that's something that Georgia's own government has indicated it wishes to do. The Global Fund is soon uh, leaving uh, Georgia. What is your government planning to ensure the funding for those programs which were funded by the Global Fund? First of all, uh, I have to express my gratitude and thankfulness to Global Fund because they are doing great job not only in my country but uh, over the world and they are saving millions of lives. The government of Georgia is uh, ready to take this responsibility and take this financial load and uh, we are preparing phase out uh, uh, agreement, transition agreement for nearly three years and I think we will assure sustainability and effectiveness of uh, current projects. There are some criticisms that uh, the repressive criminal laws in Georgia are barriers for accessing treatment for people who use drugs. 
What would you respond to those criticisms? We already did several very important steps to liberalize, uh, liberalize uh, these uh, laws and regulations. We did uh, tactical steps and we are expecting very soon strategic steps. It's not that countries are not having enough money in their budgets. It's just the programs are organized in such a way that they are not really efficient. Provision of methadone can cost like 1,000 euros per person per year in middle-income countries. This is not because methadone is expensive, this is just because countries are over-regulated. UNAIDS invested a lot into proving that harm reduction is effective, a lot of studies and research, but there are still some governments uh, which did not provide adequate funding for harm reduction after the Global Fund removed its funding. Do you have any possibilities to start a dialogue with those governments and convince them that they have to continue funding? Well, of course, it's frustrating from a UN point of view when we see some governments not doing all they can uh, to implement programs that are safe, effective, and evidence-based. But of course, we only use it as an opportunity to re-engage our dialogue, to share the information. And from in a time of government austerity, when budgets are tight, everyone is watching every euro or every dollar. It's extremely important to show to any government agency, to any funding agency, that what we're doing not only protects public health, but actually is a very good return on investment. Many governments uh, read your reports and they see that harm reduction is, or they can see that harm reduction is cost effective, but they still don't do uh, what you suggest. So what can you do to, 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 to convince these governments to do better? Sure. I think a key point is too much of our discussion is with health ministries. We need to take that decision and the discussion to where the decisions are made. So we need to engage more with Ministry of the Interior, Home Affairs, with judicial ministries and elevate it to a higher level. Is the World Bank engaging in such a dialogue with Ministry of the Interior? We, are. Um, we focus a lot on how countries can optimize their investments in health and the social sectors for greatest benefits. A couple of days ago at the UN General Assembly in New York that all the heads of state uh, and all the UN member states unanimously adopted the new post-2015 development agenda, the so-called Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and Goal 3.3 is no less ambitious than ending AIDS by 2030. So ending AIDS globally or even regionally means we also end the epidemic, not control HIV, but actually end AIDS amongst injecting drug users, amongst uh, sex workers, amongst men who have sex with men, amongst any community that is disproportionately at risk or affected by the epidemic. But if we want these programs to really be successful in the long term, they have to be owned and supported and funded by the local governments. And that's why this dialogue is so extremely important. Fund Harm Reduction